Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you a global event handler trick to instantly save and recalculate any form in your Microsoft Access database. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, if you got a form like I do here and you've got different fields and these calculations over here are based on the, the values in these fields, Whenever you change any one of these items, you've got to leave the record and come back to it or manually hit a save button or refresh the form or whatever. I'm going to show you how you can just make one change so that all you have to do is if you change one of those values and hit tab, watch what happens to the calculations on the right. Bam, they're updated immediately just by changing any one of those fields. And you don't need a whole bunch of code behind every single one of those fields. All right, let me put that back before I forget. Okay. Now, this is part 57 of my fitness database series. I'm building a fitness tracking database for my own use, but you don't have to care about fitness. The real value is the techniques that I'm showing you. This is a, a database series where I can show you all kinds of cool tips, tricks, and techniques. The save record function is one of them. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so almost immediately after I finished uh, Fitness 56, I said to myself, you know, I, I put together my dinner and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I want to see both. I want to see the difference between my, my uh, total and between the actual amount eaten because I do a lot of prep. Like when I was prepping dinner, I wanted to know exactly how many calories I had left because I was making a chicken, you know, salad with chicken. And I want to know how much crap I could throw into the salad, right? I grilled up some chicken. I wanted to know, okay, I put, I could put 12 ounces of chicken in there, which is great. You know, I got chichi beans, you know, tomatoes, all that stuff. Tan I had tangerine. I always have a tangerine for like dessert, um, you know, an egg. So I want to know exactly because I wanted to get it just right. So it would be nice to have both of those. How much have you actually eaten and what is your plan showing for the day? So we're going to do both. Um, and that was like immediately I regretted not doing that. So, <laughs> so we're going to make some changes in here. All right. First thing is. I'm going to move the goals out of the way. We're going to just set them over here. I don't really, we don't need them in the stack and the stack's getting pretty tall. So this total here, this we're going to call this planned. Okay. And I don't think we need to have difference there. We're going to slide this down. All right. This we're going to put up under that, like, like so. All right. So this will be the calorie difference. And we're just going to get rid of the eaten here. All right, get rid of you. And get rid of you. And that will show us based on the plan, right? Some total protein, some total calories. All right, save it, come back in. And that's based on what's planned. So if you take some stuff off here, it's still based on what's planned. But I still want to see for eaten too. So we're just going to copy those boxes, All right? Copy the, nope, copy these. Copy, paste. See, it's still not working. Ugh. Copy, paste. I swear, when I wasn't recording, it was working beautifully. I think it has to do with my recording software. All right. So this guy, we're going to copy this. And we're going to put in here and call this Eaton. And we're going to add the Eaton back in here. Well, okay. And then this guy is going to be this with just Eaton. And we're going to add Eaton back in there. Okay. Save it. Close it. Open it. There we go. Right. So now you can see how it stacks up the planned and actually eaten. So if you're planning your meals, and if you do that, they should all match up. They should be identical. All right. You go to a previous day, for example. Okay. Maybe I got something marked not eaten in here. Oh, I didn't mark any of this stuff eaten. Okay. See? All right. There we go. So that's, that was big. I want to change that. And the goals can sit over here. That's fine. I, I'm okay with that over there. Another thing I was thinking, I want to have a, have this warn me also if my calories are too low. It doesn't happen often, but it, it I could see it being a thing. Uh, like if I come over here and just go test, it's got that negative 2000 calories. It's green. It shouldn't be that green. Let's say if I make this, you know, if I'm only eating 1400 calories, that should not be 
good. You don't want to eat too few calories. You don't want your body to go into starvation mode as well. So I'm also going to adjust. Now we can adjust both of these at the same time because these both have the same conditional formatting. All right, so format, conditional formatting. I'm going to add a rule, new rule. If the value is, let's say, less than, I'm going to say uh, less than negative 500. So if I'm 500 calories below where I should be for the day, that's not good as well. You don't want to do that too many days in a row. So I'm going to make this, let's make it like a light, yellow, maybe almost yellow greenish. Let's go like right there. I don't want it to be like, you know, it's not dire. Now, where would we have to put this so that it fires properly? Can't put it, can't put it where it's at, at the bottom there because this will fire and stop, right? So this guy needs to be at the top. Check for that if it's below 500. Okay, it's not below 500, but it's less than zero, you're green, all right? If it's not less than zero, if we're over 200, the other way, now we're red, all right, then this will fall in for the things that are over zero, but not over 200. So that should do that. Hit OK. Save it. Save it. Close it. Open it. Let's see where we're at. Let's go back to tomorrow. And there we go. That's that's correct. Let's add this. Uh, let's add another item. Blah, 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 blah. Let's put in a thousand more calories and see what happens. There we go. And that looks about right. That's too much now. Let's go back down. Let's go back. So we're 400 over for the plan. So let's bring this down to 650. Let's see what happens. There we go. That looks good. Now, another thing, I know I'm just nitpicking in this video, but these are all the things that as I use it, I, I want to change. What we just did there, right? To change this to 1200 and hit tab. I'm still in the same record. And normally, if we didn't, if we didn't remove them, you'd see the little dirty pencil over there. But this stuff isn't updating. I want this to update when I change this, right? I want to know, okay, if I put 1900 in there, I want to see that update immediately. Now, there's all kinds of refreshes and requeries and repaints. And the easiest way to do that is just to save the record. And the fastest way that we know how to save the record is just to set dirty equal to false, right? So you could come in here in the after update event. Let me bring this back so you can see it, right? You can come here in the after update event, dot, dot, dot. That'll bring you into here. You can say me dot dirty equals false. Save it, right? Now close it, close it, open it. And we know that if I come in here now and change this to 2000 or 20,000, boom, it changes. You see the difference and the things over on the right updated. Now, I don't wanna have to come in here and do that for all of these fields individually because I'm gonna have a million lines of code in here that I don't want. So let's make that a global function and we just call it the form property, right? A, an event handler. I've showed you this many times so far. Let's get rid of what we just did. Okay, that's good. So we need a global function that we can do that will just save the record on the current form. Okay, this is what the price of admission right here, folks. You ready? So we're gonna go into the global module. We're gonna make a public function because for it to be an event handler, it's gotta be a function. We'll call it save record, save record, save record. I can't type today. It is late, it's after 10 o'clock and I'm getting kind of tired. Okay, save record. It's not actually gonna return anything, but it's gonna do some stuff. What's it gonna do? We're gonna save the record on the current form. How do we get the current form? Screen dot active form dot dirty equals false. That's all you gotta do. Do whatever the active form is, save the record. Okay? Now, all we have to do is put save record as that function handler in any field that we want to trigger it. I'm gonna just put it in all of them, ready? All right, so oh, we're already in design. See, I'm, my brain's already fried. All right, I'm gonna select all of these and anybody up here that we want to do it. Let's do it to quantity. I don't think these guys don't affect that, so there's no reason to fire that for these. So just those fields, I want to trigger the save, right? So now I'll come in the after update and say equals save record, there it is, open close parentheses, whoops, open close parentheses, right? Save it, close it, close it, open it. And now if I go to that record here tomorrow, if I come down here and put in 100, hit tab, boom, and it just, it just works. Put 500 in here, 
400, whatever, tab, boom, it works. See? Any one of these now, if I come up here and put in a two, boom, everything's updated. That's the easiest and quickest way that I know of to have all of this stuff recalculate. It's, it's faster than refresh too, because refresh basically says reload the record from the table. This just says save it and update the calculations. Much, much faster than refresh. I think I've talked about this before. See, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old and I don't remember what we've covered. And this is less than what, 57? So, <laughs> all right. And I got a bunch more little nitpicks too. We'll get to those in the next lesson. So that's going to do it for part 57 of your fitness database series. I hope you learned something. That's your tech help video for today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.